Park niggas know me. Curb on, little homie. All days, all days. Yeah. Been a road, been a road. Last time we got a chance to hang out, man, we was in L.A., man, that yeah. big old match in the hills, man. Uh, yeah, the biggest, the hell biggest. of a time. Shout out to CJ again, yeah. right? He, was, he put a strong yeah, he put hand in that writers together. out there, invite me out there with you guys and all that, man. Was that your big first major video? Or was yeah, that was my, that that was a video. That yeah. wasn't just a nigga walking around you with a camera pulling up in your neighborhood. That was a video. It was a, it was a, it was a set. It was times. It was fucking people there. That didn't even say a word. That was setting up shit. That you just look. I'm looking around like, what the fuck? Like, yeah, yeah. yeah dressing room and fucking, fucking big ass full course breakfast. All yeah, I missed Defeat. the breakfast yeah. running around and shit. But yeah, that was huge, man. That was just coming from where coming from DC and coming from the prison background. Right. That was my moment of like. Nigga, yeah. Right, like, yeah. Nigga, that's it. Because cause, cause CJ, he right me out there saying, man, we got this big mafioso scene where you going to be the CEO, you going to be the big boss. He got me sitting in the pool side with a bunch of <laughs> rock girls called yeah. the baby suit. I say, I say what, what a mob ball scene that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Was, that, but, that, but that was good. That was good. You was taking a lot of meetings out there. I noticed people yeah. coming in and all that. Did you uh, close any business deals or? Nah, I really, uh, I'm just hearing where everybody got the safe for real, for real. Mm -hmm. Cause I know I got a particular way that I want to go. Mm -hmm. And I know I got to give up certain things to, cause like taking a deal is like taking a loan and mm -hmm. shit. So uh, if I if I do take that, I want it to be the, in the best benefits of myself and mm -hmm. for the future of me, like with my son and the mm -hmm. label going right. forward and right. shit. Right. Real fast, speak to that when you say taking a deal is like taking a loan. Yeah. Explain that. Before. Yeah, like basically getting a record deal is basically like getting a loan to uh to pay all the expensive shit to do and rap. Like <clears throat> videos, mm. uh making hit songs, recording at the best studios, tours, merchandise, all that shit costs money. So a label looking at you like, huh, we're gonna give you two million dollars. Mm. They might give you five hundred thousand in uh in advance. That's cash you take all the break. Mm. So now that's one point five million that you uh that you broke out of okay. whatever they're gonna put up. And they looking to make of the two million they give you at least five, ten million or whatever they can squeeze out of. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, if you gonna give me this amount of money to do this for y'all, I'm gonna make sure I'm gonna be doing some shit for me in it. Mm -hmm. Feel like with fifty cent, like fifty cent one of the greatest businessmen of our time. Mm -hmm. When he took his deal, he started a record label with his advance money. Mm -hmm. So uh that G on the clothes and all that right. shit. So normally niggas would take their advance and go spend it. Mm -hmm. But that advance you gotta pay it back. Mm -hmm. So he took it and invested in that's it in something sure. that's gonna pay him and get on the money to pay it back and shit. So I just wanna be in the positions where I could do shit like that. Make sure all that shit makes sense. Right, right, yeah. That was smart. That's how fit it be. That was smart. Yeah. That was smart. Um Yes. Yeah, some years back, man, I was looking. I seen you was on the uh, the Vlad joint, man. Yeah, How Vlad did that come TV. about? Uh, a good friend of mine, man, from going on Creflo Dollar show. Once I went on there, it's just, it was the story. It's like once that shit hit the net, it's like all the top interviewers wanted to interview me for real, for real. And a friend of mine's name Ice, she made the play happen. Well, Jennifer, I call her Ice. Right. She made the play happen, connected the dots, and next thing you know, I was on fucking Vlad TV. Right, that right. shit was like that too. Right, right. I hear a lot of people when they speak of Vlad TV, which I think is a great platform. But yeah. I hear a lot of people saying that he tried to run you to a brick wall, man. He tried to put you, make you set yourself up. I mean, what's your opinion he, about he, that? He doing his job. He trying to get the best interview possible for the attention span of the audience. He know the audience like street shit, killings, and jail. So he trying to pull everything out. Right. It's up to you what you gonna give him and shit. Right. I, like I said, I ain't never talked to police before, so. Right, right, right. And if they talk to me, I know how to, you know, navigate through whatever I need to navigate through. So it was cool, but it's a great platform because he he uh, he branded himself and built himself up in a way he got a lot of watches. So it's your time to, you know, get your story out there to the masses. And I know once I got on Vlad, I got at least 15, 10 to 15,000 followers in that week. Mm -hmm. Like, as soon as he posted, and he broke my uh, my interview down into five parts. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I got five interviews with him for real, for real. And just spread them Jones across yeah. to uh, YouTube. Yeah, I said, yeah. I said, that's like Shorty up there. He, he making waves, you know yeah. what I'm saying? And I was like, for real. I, don't, I might still be like, nah, Young Gleesh on there, like mm -hmm. one of the only rappers in the area with a Vlad TV interview. Young Gleesh, he from DC, or he's yeah. from DC? Yeah. He's still in the game? 
I don't I don't know too much about him because he was already gone by the time I came home. Mm-hmm. So I uh yeah I don't know I seen like a doc of, like a documentary he was in and it was talking about, he like moved down here from somewhere or some shit but I don't know too much about him. Right though. yeah okay okay and, and I and I say moving around the city I seen a lot of circles like doing some mental health work what's, yeah. what's, what's up with that like yeah you, that's connected with uh, C J with S O S and L E S just mm-hmm. uh you know tapping into what we need with our youth and with everybody in the black community, right. understanding and how to deal with trauma. Because right. a lot of us went through a lot of shit in our lives and we don't be understanding that that trauma is the reason why we react to certain things in a yeah. negative way. Mm-hmm. So if we uh, find a way to get to that trauma and communicate it right and uh, unwind that shit, we'd be able to drive without kirking out on that fucking driver next to us like mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. shit like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I did a little few things with the mental health uh, work also. So, being those you learned that work and you kind of get getting the more the clinical side of that work, yeah. right? So when you dealing with dudes in the street and all that, and now you got a different perspective on bipolar, passive yeah, aggression, all that. Do all it make that. you handle shit different? Do you yeah, be definitely. more tolerant with the street for definitely. a type of nigga on the wrist for something? Yeah, definitely. It, it should and understanding, not even like. Just understanding somebody mm-hmm. and understanding reasons. Like people will look at someone for something they did, but mm-hmm. they will never look at the reasons behind why they did it. Mm-hmm. You feel what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So it, it opened me up to compassion and understanding people and understanding people and respecting their story and mm-hmm. shit. Mm-hmm. So uh, if somebody was to call me and be like, if like say a female cousin called me and be like, this guy disrespected me or he right. did something, right. and like approaching the situation I understand is reasons for why everybody do everything so to uh mediate the situation I could come at it with a better you know with a better understanding the graphs to get the situation handled without you know it going to somebody getting killed or some shit like that right right so you get do you get a chance to, like go to schools or yeah inside the uh, detention centers with the youth yeah and all I go that uh, I just matter of fact I just went to the uh, New Oak Hill and uh they actually let me take a studio in there to record the youngest right. the first time that ever happened like we took an actual the whole all the studio equipment in it right. set it up and we let them rap they re, all of them got to record a song and i'm uh you know i'm still in touch with them i'm blue all the schools like i go anywhere they allow me to go and i'm gonna holler at the youngest like i love the youngest that's what really got me out of prison early mm. that's what got me my sense from 40 years to 20 years because i created a tutoring group a youth group and a music group and uh, I was doing that because that's what I do. And I was getting dudes out of gangs without the retaliation of the gangs. Right. And uh, a female friend of mine sent all that shit to the judge. And the judge called me back to court and was like, what, what the f- we never had nobody do no shit like this. And that's powerful. You yeah. went to 16. So how many actually years you did in jail? 13. 13. Yeah. 16 come out 29. Yep. All type of programs, certificates. Yeah, all judge, that shit. Judge call you back in, look at your jacket and say, man, yeah, Slim ain't like, bullshit. What the the fuck? Yeah. yeah. And the violent part, she understood because uh, I got sent to the cut and I was 16. Like, right. she, I'm not going to let nobody play with me and, right. you know, get raved or get somebody right. taking my shit or I ain't doing right. that. So she, it was a lot for the judge to show compassion towards violence because mm-hmm. she could have been like, you stabbed this person, you stabbed that person, you did this, you the mm-hmm. same person. Mm-hmm. Instead, she looked at it like, I understand why he did those mm-hmm. things. You feel what I'm she saying? She seen your work ethic. She yeah, been like, and, she, and that yeah, shit, out, the good yeah, shit I still outbalanced it because all the shit that I did really still overshadowed. That's why the prisons let me do what I did with the youngest because they were like, all right, this, he crazy as shit, mm-hmm. but he, he take care of his own though. Right. Hey, man, so you yeah. were 16. So how many actually... Years you did in jail. Thirteen. Thirteen. Yeah. Sixteen come out twenty nine. Yep. All type of programs, certificates. Yeah, all judge, that shit. Judge call you back in, look at your jacket and say, yeah, man, Slim ain't like, bullshit. What the the fuck? Yeah. yeah. And the violent part she understood because uh I got sent to the cut and I was sixteen. Like right. she I'm not gonna let nobody play with me and right. you know, get raved or get somebody right. taking my shit or I ain't doing right. that. So she it was a lot for the judge to show compassion towards violence. Because mm-hmm. she could have been like, you stabbed this person, you stabbed that person, you did this, you the mm-hmm. same person. Mm-hmm. Instead, she looked at it like, I understand why he did those mm-hmm. things. You feel what I'm she saying? She changed her work ethic. She yeah, been like, and, she, and that yeah, shit, out, the good yeah, shit I still outbalanced it because all the shit that I did really still overshadowed. That's why the prisons let me do what I did with the youngest because they were like, all right, this, he crazy as shit, mm-hmm. but he, he take care of his own though. Right. Hey, man, it sounded like on your journey, you had a, must have had a hell of a praying family, man. I mean, like yeah, you, man, I had a crazy, and it made it easier because, like, 
man, we all like, I was able to hustle in jail, so right. I never had to ask nobody for money. Right. So it was easy to support me. All I right. wanted was pictures and right. a letter or, some, or right. a visit. Right. So it wasn't, you know, like when you locked up, you could run people away because if you ask them for too much money mm -hmm. and shit, and they don't want to say no, so the best thing they do is fucking annoy you and shit. Mm -hmm. But I never asked nobody for no bread, so they everybody was there. They like, put seven on that joint. They yeah. said seven. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> man, yeah, man. It was. I ain't gonna lie, man. I, uh, I'm, I'm like super thankful for my support system. Even when I got sent to Supermax for a situation that I did, I was in there for a year fighting a new charge. Like they ain't turn their back on me because they understood mm -hmm. why I did it. Mm -hmm. So uh, it showed that they believed in me and shit. Mm -hmm. Now, I guess it went. You said or we said you said earlier about DC versus Atlanta, uh, the music scene and all that. And you was you, you touched on saying that we need to think about getting some studios. Like, yeah, talk more into that. What you what yeah, you just get uh, yeah. get into uh, starting to build that infrastructure up, like a respected studio space that have everything top notch and top quality, and uh, so people could go in and compete. Like mm -hmm. dudes could stop shooting videos on their front porch. Mm -hmm. Like uh, and financially, it should be somehow, some way, whether it's from a collective of people or some type of way to get that thing funded. Mm -hmm. So a young artist that people believe in could come there and don't gotta worry about having to spend fifteen thousand dollars on a video. Mm -hmm. Like he's not scared away. So you have some type of uh, membership or something that a dude could come there and record this video affordable for his rate because everybody rates ain't the same. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so our artists could start competing and our area could start competing. Because if, say for instance, uh, Young E-Class just shot this groundbreaking video at DMV Bop Bop Studio. Okay. Once that hit the net and that go viral or whatever happens, mm -hmm. other people are like, damn, where you shoot your video at? I point them there. So you'll have dudes traveling from wherever they at to shoot their videos there instead mm -hmm. of us, how we travel everywhere to shoot our videos. Mm -hmm. So it's just about getting in the market and competing. Right. Like our area guy compete, our artist guy compete, our managers, our influencers, everybody. It's just about competing for real. Right. Uh, on your journey, did you have any problems? Because you know, man, come from D.C., we got a hell of a reputation man. in the federal institution, on the streets, in college, or everywhere you go, they say we, we make a mess, right? Have that hindered you anyway in your growth? Man, the only thing uh, being from here I had to get a hold of was the, the being so reserved. Because, you mm -hmm. know, like, we don't really talk to a lot of people. Like, right. if somebody be on some bam shit, like, we don't, we ain't no right. more communication. So right. I found myself in a, a room with some people that could have changed the trajectory of my career, mm -hmm. but they was loud and goofy. Right. So I ain't I didn't even say shit. So <laughs> so V, uh she was she, you know, she hollered at me afterwards like we need you to get in artist mode. Like we need you to be able to communicate XYZ with whomever you knew to further yourself, long as it don't get involved with your principles and your morals. If somebody been goofy, let them be goofy. Right. You still could, you know, utilize the situation. So uh and like I said, when I be in the rooms and they see once I get laid back like this and everybody doing their thing and I ain't really paying attention, they like, oh, he from D.C. or somewhere down there. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but that's not good, though, because, like, when you – it's all about networking. It's all about who you know, and that gets you further than money, too. The yeah. people you know get you indoors that money can't because if all of us at the door and all of us got money, right. like – yeah. What's gonna separate and then us? A couple spaces now, when that inside. person come to that door, they gonna open it. Mm -hmm. They don't care about the money. They gonna pick who they know. Mm -hmm. You feel me? And I want to be the person that they know, so they go ahead and let me walk up in that motherfucker. Right, right, right. And and that's a, that's a good point. I like that point right there. So you, like I said, when you was in jail, you put some some programs together for the yeah. youth. Uh, you did work with the mental health services. Yeah. You touring all around the country, possibly the world, with your music. Um, you're from D.C., so you see all the violence going on, you know right. what I'm saying, the shooting crazy all over the country, but you can speak on D.C. since you're here. If you had the opportunity to have all the power that the mayor got, what's something you would put in implication or put in place that can help change some of this uh, dramas going on here? Uh, some ideas? Me, me personally, I bring back the old programs. Like, when I was growing up, we had the Fisher School, hmm. uh, Boys and Girls Club programs, out-of-school programs, like, now it's 
I don't even be saying no programs. Like, all I see is young as they even in the house playing a game or they outside banging. Mm-hmm. So, like, the first step is to bring back all the programs. Because I know that kept me out of mm-hmm. trouble when I was the age that they was. Mm-hmm. It kept me out of trouble. And, uh, and when you really look at it, the age that they start taking the programs away is when I got fucking locked up. Mm-hmm. So if we know that these programs work, why the fuck is they gone? Mm-hmm. So that'd be the first step, man. Uh, just getting out there in the communities and trying to put a cap on that gentrification shit because mm-hmm. that shit fucks the community up in a way that they don't even understand because the community raised kids. It ain't just the parents. Mm-hmm. Like, the whole entire community mm-hmm. raised the kid. Mm-hmm. So when you got a situation where people get moved out because of gentrification, it's like you got... This house over here, Airbnb, this house these white people living in, this house these people from wherever living in, and you living in this house, it's like, they don't care about the community. They not from there. They mm-hmm. gonna go to work, come there to sleep. Go out of the country, come there to sleep. We live there, we don't just sleep there. Mm-hmm. So uh, that's another thing. Uh, once you get on top of those two things, mm-hmm. everything else will start falling in place for real. Mm-hmm. Cause nothing gonna be perfect. Violence is a part of life, but mm-hmm. it's just like, I'm on my end. I don't like when the streets affect people that's not in the streets. Mm. Like when mm. women and kids getting killed, like that fucks with me. Right. I don't never think streets should spill over and affect people that's not in the streets. Right. You feel what I'm saying? Right. That and and uh, like some people call it getting your target and things of that nature. Mm-hmm. But it's just the underworld should be here and civilians and regular people should be here because it's all just like in business. You got. The, the black market, then you got regular business, mm. but them two don't never spill over. It's like right. s- saltwater f- fish and freshwater fish. Mm-hmm. They could be next to each other, but they ain't gonna never cross over, mm-hmm. ever, mm-hmm. ever. And that's how I think it should be. Right, yeah. And, and working with a lot of youth, and I'm saying, and you around them, man, the capacity, the uh, the compassion level is so low. Facts. Um, and, you, and I'm pretty sure you have a lot of intimate conversations. I do too, you yeah. know what I'm saying? But I wanna get your perspective on where, where that pain coming from? Where that, that non-capacity, you know, compassion coming from? Man, just like, it's like, I went through that too when I was young. And I got one young that I deal with right now. Mm-hmm. Like, you got to show them that you love them, you mm-hmm. Like, a lot of people don't feel love from, mm-hmm. from whether it's their family or mm-hmm. from the community. Because it's like, like, it's different growing up now. Because at first, growing up for us and for you, it was like, you know, you had church and you had certain ways that kids were supposed to be and they was that way. Like, mm-hmm. you couldn't get in grown folks' conversations mm-hmm. and things. Now, growing up is different because younger people are having kids. So certain rules that was in our households is not in their households. So they're not used to certain structures. Mm-hmm. So with that, you got a lot of people that look down on them and just blame everything on them so they don't give a fuck it's like mm-hmm. fuck it you don't fuck with me y'all don't fuck with me fuck it but you gotta just let them know you love them so mm-hmm. one young and like he be thinking about suicide and uh mm-hmm. different things and i'd be like bro you good mm-hmm. and until i put him in a position to show him that i really loved him mm-hmm. He was that way. Now he good. Like he's mm-hmm. straight. He know he at least got one person that love him. Mm-hmm. And uh that that love and that passion, they could change a person and, and make them start believing. And once you instill hope in the hopeless, man, the future bright as fuck for him. Well, and yeah. that's how I look at it. Yeah, that, 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 that's a that's a saying they say they don't they don't care till they know you care. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So it's he facts. feel he feels your pain, feels your love. Yeah, that's the same way with me. I remember I used to sag my pants and shit. Uh-huh. And then you know, going into prison, you know, they it's like yeah. it's certain yeah. things that come with that. Uh-huh. But I told the old heads, like, man, I don't like, fuck you, like uh-huh. I don't care, type uh-huh. shit. Like uh-huh. it ain't really too much you could tell me. And uh I looked at it like when I start pulling my pants up, it's cause I found hope. Uh-huh. And I found hope through the older guys that really show me they fuck with mm-hmm. me. Them niggas had double life and triple life. Mm-hmm. How could you care for me and you got all this time? Mm-hmm. Then I said another friend of mine is taking care of his kid from behind the wall. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, damn. Strong. Like he he mm-hmm. put his kids through college. Mm-hmm. Like it's times where he we'll be watching a game or something. Mm-hmm. Somebody be like, yeah, such and such said call. It might have been his baby mother. He run to the phone. Mm-hmm. Get on the phone. Mm-hmm. What you you ain't get up and go to school this morning. <laughs> Man, I'm a, yeah. And that's just something simple, but it's big in parenting. Right. It's something simple to the world of somebody that wake up and yeah, go to school. Ain't nothing simple right there. But it's, yeah, 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 it's yeah. big to parenting. So just that conversation alone, like his his son or his father there, he miles away with 
triple life, but he there. And from me seeing love from them different pockets, that's what like really changed me for real, for real. And and, and that's a man, that's a hell of an example you gave because to the average eye, they just seen somebody going through the phone, but somebody yeah. that's in the struggle, that's actually in the war. You know what I'm saying? That's the equivalent of you seeing an army moving. And and bombs and shit going. Yeah. You see them get the phone. We need backup. We need yeah, backup. Facts, he, facts. In, he in war, but he keep talking to his kids. Yeah. Make sure he's in school. So whoever, man, that, that guy is, man, he need to be applauded. You know what I'm saying? Facts. Well, shout out to him, whoever he is. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, that, yeah that's us. Uh, Sid, Sid, Wack. All the wax that raised man that jumped, man. That's, it's more than him. It's, right. it's all of them did that. And I used to, and that's how I was. I look at certain things as no excuses. Like, it's no excuse why my father couldn't be a certain way if these people were here right. raising their kids from behind the wall and shit. That's powerful. Out the park, niggas know me. Curb on, little homie. All days, all days. Yeah. Been a road, been a road.